The log cabin was constructed sometime between 1859 and 1874. In 1888, Mary Perkins bought the property. She and her husband lived in the cabin until they died many years later. This log cabin is pretty special because it's one of the very few examples left of a real log cabin that was built in this area because if you think about it at that time, and we're talking about the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, where the pioneer settlers were moving into this area. Now, uh, early 1830s, we're, we weren't even a state yet. We didn't become a state until 1837. So when the earliest pioneers came in here, this was Michigan Territory, formerly part of Northwest Territory. It was very primitive. Um, once you got away from the Great Lakes shoreline, you really were looking at um, mostly just native people living in this area. You might have a, a few French voyageurs coming through the uh, rivers, um, trading for beaver pelts and so on. But uh, the pioneer settlers really had to wade into the depths of the forest to find their property that they had purchased. In 1971, the log cabin was slated for destruction, but Robert Copeland, a Hazlitt Middle School teacher, rescued the cabin. MSU professor Vander Yacht, the owner at the time, then donated the building to the Hazlitt School District. Well, Bob was one of the teachers. It was actually Jane Taylor who was one of the middle school teachers who found out about it and convinced Professor Vander Yacht, please don't torch it, please give it to us. And so Bob Copeland was the teacher in charge that was given the responsibility to set up a curriculum with the middle school students where they actually went out to the old cabin, they tore it down, they labeled every single log with paint so that when they got it to the middle school, they could put it right back together. Unfortunately, it was water-based paint. And so as soon as the rains came, it washed the numbers away so when they got it to the middle school, it was kind of like a giant jigsaw puzzle, having to put it back together. But Bob Copeland and his students, and Jane Taylor as another teacher helping, and then Ray uh, Kerner, who was a third teacher, he taught them things like tinsmithing. And the art teacher came out and had them sketching it, and the, the home ec teacher had them learning about how to cook over an open fire. It was a fascinating program. It was called Pioneer Living and Outdoor Education. And it got a really good reputation um, internationally. Educational, just like all of our buildings are. We use all of these to teach um, an awful lot of students. We have about 2,500 students come through our village every year, and that doesn't count all the children and the adults that come through at our special events.